All right, let's talk about uh, the first. The first thing is the, is the buy in, and Danielson and Suzuki was awesome. I didn't really turn it to the YouTube show until that match, until I knew that they were going into the ring. It's let's say instead of uh, Ruby Soho and the Bunny, let's say they just replaced that with that match. Like that seems like an easy thing to do. Why wouldn't they have done that? I can't give you a good answer. I haven't asked. Um, I mean, it could be that he, you know, it's like, I don't think that he's like, it's like, I know he wanted to win, but I don't think he wants to win. I think there's a mentality. And it's very, very clear that there's a difference in the mentality between Vince and Tony. And I'm not saying which one's better or worse when it comes to a fight. You know what I mean? Like when this became a fight on Monday and Wednesday, what did Vince do? He started throwing, you know, pulling stuff from pay-per-view and putting it on TV, Mm -hmm. putting, you know, two world championship matches on TV, Um, you know, like doing doing all these things to win the week or in the case of tonight to win the night. And Tony just kind of does what he does. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, he put this Brian Danielson Suzuki match on YouTube, but in his mind, I think that like Ruby Soho and the bunny, you know, he wanted it to build to Ruby Soho against Penelope Ford and he had his angle and he's got his TV in his head that he's doing, you know, his kind of, you know, big picture. I'm sure he's got it all booked out in his head and little picture, you know, changed every week and everything. But I think he's just got, this is what I'm doing and I'm doing it. And it's kind of like, you know, it's just I've got I've got a long term story to tell and I'm not going to get in the middle of, you know, hot shotting. I mean, like, look, he could go in there and he could have put, you know, you know, like Kenny Omega and Brian Danielson. WWE would do it. But Kenny Omega and Brian Danielson for the championship on TV tonight. You know what I mean? And just said, like, screw it. We're going to go and win. But it's not that's not that's not it you know how he mentally does wrestling so he didn't it's like, do it. it's like re- he, he doesn't want to react to what they're doing as much he doesn't you know i mean when i when i saw this thing and it's like yeah you know you, you know the, the biggest match of the night is on freaking youtube and then what would you know i will learn a lot tomorrow you know or, or well really monday you know when when everything comes out but the one thing we that we do know tonight is that freaking <laughs> Watching people are not watching wrestling live on YouTube. I mean, at all. When people think, oh, you know, you need to put more stuff on streaming to get like the audience, and it's like, no, you need to put more stuff on television because people, this was a freaking awesome match. Anyone with half a knowledge of wrestling knows it's going to be an awesome match. And, you know, I mean, there are people who watched it after the fact, but live, it didn't do anything. It did, you know, it did, it did, honestly, it did. I I had a number that I expected, which was several hundred thousand. And then I was going to have to explain that, okay, it looks like it did a number comparable or or near what Rampage did. But it's really not the same because, number one, you're including international. Number two, it's a completely different, you know, you know, YouTube, if you click on three times, it counts as three. If you watch five seconds, it counts as one. You know, I mean, for television, you have to watch for the length of the show to count as one. So like basically for every viewer that you hear about, like, like SmackDown, for example, okay, not, not necessarily this week, but you know, a SmackDown that does, let's say 2.3 million viewers, you know, you know, when, when you add everything up, you know, between, you know, all viewers and everything like that, you're, you're talking more than 5 million people watching the show. You know, people will go, oh, there's only 2 million wrestlers. There's 5 million people probably watching that show. But they're not watching the two hours. The average right. person watches half the show, and then you've got the DVR people who don't watch live and all that. But but for general, generally, about double the number of the, the, the number that you'll get on, on Tuesday or Thursday or whatever, generally about double watched it that night, and then you still got the people who watch on DVR over the next week. So... Um, and then the um, and that's that's an average of, you know, so I mean, I guess that that would be comparable in the sense of um, if you cut it in half and then cut out whatever was outside the United States, um, you probably have a, a reasonable thing, you know, as far as what the real number is that that would watch as comparable 
to a television rating. I mean, like, it's not as ridiculous, but it could be because like when, when WWE did Mixed Match Challenge, they were doing between 1.2 and 1.8 million views. But as what, but when you would figure it as a television rating, it was about 60,000. And live, it was, you know, about 40,000. Um, you know, in 60, you know, in, if you include late viewership, because most people, the average person's watching like a minute or two and that's it. They watch for a couple minutes and then they just get bored and don't watch it. I, I mean, I'm thinking of Brian Danielson and Nora Suzuki match. I do believe that a lot of people watched that 20 minutes, you know, without, you know, tuning in and out. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's also a rarity, but that's still only 20 minutes. And they, I, and I don't think. Most people watched the, the you know, Ty, Ty Conti and um, Santana Garrett, which I mean, Ty Conti and Santana Garrett is like the funniest thing when I saw that, because it's like that tells you whether good or bad, the memory of freaking Tony Khan, because, you know, that that, <laughs> that was in November of, of 2019, the first time in total viewers that NXT ever won a quarter over AEW, it was a Santana Garrett against Ty Conti match on NXT that beat AEW by 4,000 viewers. First time ever. And so he's going head to head and he's bringing it back and not even telling that story. He's just doing it for his own whatever. He's got that memory. And he, I think he just, you know, he wants to put Ty Conti over. I think that that's probably the reason we had that. Just give her a win. But the opponent, 100%, had to be like, you know, I'm, I'm just doing it because that's what he did. It's crazy. Um, so did, did did Santana Garrett know that that's why she was in that match though? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> it's well, not like she, she she probably doesn't care. She gets to be on TV. She got to be on TV, and they were whatever. It was that. so so. Just so you have the count. So the as of we're recording this. The full hour, because it's not split up into segments, it's just the buy-in hour, was at about 354K. And I looked, comparison to WWE stuff, the uh, the Lesnar-Roman segment, which is only five minutes, is at 450K. Yeah, the Lesnar and Roman Reigns segment will end up um, uh, probably two to three million, because that's what they usually do, you know, when, when all is said and done. Um, you know, because I always print those numbers up. And Le- Lesnar and Roman Reigns are by far, by far, by far, by far, the biggest YouTube draws in WWE. I mean, like, um, you know, Becky Lynch is, and be, be, Becky Lynch can be, but she's second tier. I mean, it's bra- it's Roman Reigns is, is is number one always. I mean, he is by far the biggest. And, and Lesnar, but Lesnar's, Lesnar's every bit as big as Roman Reigns, I think. Um, CM Punk can be as big, too. Um, but I don't know if that's going to, you know, um, that's, that doesn't happen every week, but when CM, you know, certain CM Punk segments have done gigantic. Um, but yeah, I, I looked at it when I looked at it, it was 194,000 and that would have been, I'm thinking 45 minutes after it was over and, and that, you know, that was, you know, to me, okay. So that means. You know, there's pro- at most 95,000. And then let's say like, let's be nice and say only 20% are out of the country. So let's say it's like 70,000, you know, like, and it's just like, you know, if that matches on TV, you know, you would, you would hope, you would hope you could get it up to 700. So you're at best, you're doing one tenth the TV, maybe one ninth. So it's just like the idea of, of, of streaming or putting something on YouTube instead of television. It's like there, you know, there, there may and probably someday will come a time that it's comparable, but it, you know, it's not even remotely close now. I mean, it's, it's farther, it's farther than I even thought it was. And I thought, and I knew it was far. I thought they might be able to get like, you know, um, one third of a TV number, you know, and this is like one tenth, and that's with like a, a hardcore dream match. You know, it's like, um, granted, Minoru Suzuki's not known outside of certain circles, um, but Brian Danielson is, and um, yeah, so yeah, I, I um, that that aspect was um, so so that yeah, we had like an incredible, incredible match, um, just great. I I watched it. I thought those two guys had the time of their lives. I know for sure one of them did. Danielson, um, you know, you can't really tell with Suzuki. He always seems like he's having the time of his life when he's massacring people. So um, it was, it was, uh, 
great, great, great match. But um, the idea of, you know, YouTube being competition for for SmackDown, uh, that didn't happen. And, uh, you know, it, it's just not it's just not it just doesn't work that way. So how long is Suzuki going to be in the U.S.? Because he's doing something with Impact too soon, right? He's doing Impact next weekend um, for their TVs. Um, not sure how long he's staying, but he's getting a lot of work. Everybody wants to book him. He's the hottest thing on the Indies. It's awesome. Oh yeah, I know. I I I didn't watch his match with Joey Janela, but people are telling me that was awesome. Um, he's doing the blood the Josh Barnett blood sports show. Um. I mean, as a cult guy for for fans that are like, you know, um, that are into Japanese wrestling, he's um, <laughs> he's he's huge. He's huge. Did I ever tell you that I met him before? I don't I think you did. Yeah. Yeah. It was uh, New York WrestleMania. We were there because we were with J.R. Kratos and he was doing the blood sports show. And so we were just in the back because if you remember that building that they were doing uh, all of those shows at, like if there were it was so it was small. So if they were setting up like everybody had to be outside, like there was not even a locker room, I don't think. So as uh, Suzuki comes up and we're all just like hanging out there and we're obviously with Kratos. So he just comes over just shakes all of our hands like very nice and then he starts smoking cigarettes so cool. <laughs> that's, that's him <laughs> hey if you're a big fan of wrestling observer radio we got twelve thousand episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website wrestlingobserver.com if you sign up today you get access to every single one of them the 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week you can podcast them listen to them on the road at work working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts, and also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com, 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.